a critical part of the industrial strategy is getting businesses to work with academia so that each of them can bring out the best, help each other, and really create a one plus one equals three end result. I've used that phrase before in interviews today, but it absolutely is. It's all about really generating much more result from what we've already got. And they've got some really great things in this country, including, I'm happy to say, the Institute for Manufacturing at Cambridge University and Professor Tim Minchell from there. Um, our readers will be very familiar with the IFM because you write for us very frequently. Uh, you and your team write for us very frequently. But before we get going about some of the nuts and bolts of all of this, just tell us what IFM actually does. Sure, so the uh, IFM is part of Cambridge University Engineering Department. It's around 350 people with one uh, single mission, and that's to help manufacture a better world. And we do that through a series of research activities, teaching activities, and industrial engagement activities. And we, we uh, a little unusual in that we span the domain of technology and management and policy, because we feel that the challenges faced by UK manufacturing or global manufacturing today don't sit in neat little silos. They sit at the interfaces between issues of technology and management and policy. So when it comes to uh, the business relationship, how does that work? I mean, do you embark on joint projects with businesses? Do they buy your services uh, to help research specific things? How does that actually, or maybe all of the above, I don't know. A bit of all of the above. Uh, so we, uh, it, it's a really great question to raise because this is the, the, the fundamental issue around uh, how universities engage with industries, what business models work. So the one that works for us and other models exist is that we have very engaged research activities. So companies work with us on research projects, sometimes supported by uh, government funding, sometimes supported by the companies themselves. We do a lot of uh, executive training courses on all sorts of issues from um, specific technology activities right up to business strategy level. Um, and we also, uh, within our, uh, the business that we run, uh, which has only one purpose, which is to disseminate the results of our research. We do it through events, and we do it through direct consultancy work, and we do it through publications. So we're now at the launch today of the Northwest Pilot, etc., the, the Made Smarter Initiative, an industrial strategy that is finally getting some traction. Um, indeed, first time we've had an industrial strategy for some years. Mm -hmm. um, Part J, uh, you know, the, uh, the catapults and so on, which I think have been very positive um, initiatives from sure. Lord Mandelson through to Vince Cable and so on. So how does the, your operation at IFM fit into the Made Smarter? What advantage are you taking of this new wave of uh, information dissemination, um, financial support for business? Uh, so I guess in a number of ways. So we've been um, helping wherever we can in the support of understanding how this uh, strategy has been uh, developed and how it's now being implemented. But I guess a, a key thing is kind of plays back to this point about it's not a single technology solution to a problem. So we're trying to just help companies uh, and the government as well uh, reflect on this fact that it's a, it's a very complex system problem. And we can overthink it if we're not careful. But there is something about uh, large companies will do great things with these technologies and are doing it and we are in many ways world leading. I think particularly interest to us is the role of the smaller companies. And again, they sort of sometimes it can be grouped as there are large multinationals and there are SMEs and they're two different groups and that's what we need to worry about. Of course it's not like that. Within the community of SMEs there's a high degree of segmentation needed if we're going to try and find a way to say how can these new digital technologies support improvements in productivity. So you have, a, just a quick example, the firm that perhaps has never adopted digital technologies at one end, right the way through a, along a spectrum to the other end where you have firms that are very much maybe based entirely around advanced digital solutions. And so just to group them all together as SMEs is, is missing the point dramatically. So we're really pleased that the Northwest pilot is taking the segmented view of things and saying we need to think about that in much more detail about the, the non-adopters right the way through to the very sophisticated adopters and everybody in between. I, I, you used a word a few moments ago and I, 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 I hope you won't um, be annoyed that I'm picking you up on it. You used the word problem. And I, I think that whenever government ah. and uh, policy makers generally uh, address an issue, they like to see it in terms of problems because they can then come up with solutions. 
But I think that part of the disjunct is that companies may say, well, I don't have a problem. I'm actually doing quite well, thank you. Oh, that's a great point. So, so and what, please go. Pick no, up. you're absolutely right to pick me up on that. So, uh, for, for a number of reasons. Um, I think one is if we view it as a problem, then there is going to be a solution and it will be done. I think what we're, we're seeing around this expo today is the complexity and the diversity of this is not a series of technologies to solve a problem. You're absolutely right. It is part of an ongoing process of change. And calling it a revolution is, is one thing. But this is, manufacturing will continue to change. And there will always be new technologies. So it's supporting companies to be fit to adopt and transform in the light of continuous change. Sounds a bit glib, but I think that's, that's really the issue that you're highlighting is that it's not a, oh, there's a thing we need to fix, we must fix it, then we'll all be fine. It's not like that at all. It's about the ability to respond to ongoing change. And it's also about saying to, uh, to smaller companies who, who may be the ones saying, I haven't got a problem, I'm doing just well, thank you, uh, is saying, you are doing well and you're to be congratulated. Yes. Here is a way you can do it better, more di- for your customers, for your workforce. Indeed. And I think for your supply chain. That's a great point. And I think that there's also something about this, these solutions may not be the ones that are needed by some firms. So the assumption is that if you did this, you would be better. Was many of the um, uh, challenges being faced by smaller companies may not be entirely solved by digital technology. So we're really intrigued by how do we support increasing productivity amongst smaller firms. And part of the solution may be to help them adopt digital technologies. But that's not going to be the complete solution and maybe a later stage solution for some of them. Well, Tim, we, we are, as you say, or you are anyway, manufacturing the future. I love that phrase. That's great. What do you think when you say that? I mean, you obviously, it's, it, it sounds like it could be just a strap line, but you really believe that, don't you? You're quite we wedded do. to that. And we tell do. me a little bit more about that. So this, this, this idea of, of manufacturing a better world, we absolutely do love it. Manufacturing and it, a better world, I beg your pardon. No, yeah. no, no, it's, it's it linked to manufacturing a future as well, but it's, a, it's part of the same thing. Um, we did have that nice debate amongst our colleagues where we said we need to have this sense of a single purpose that unites us in everything we do, because otherwise the risk is, you know, what academics can be like, perhaps lots of ex- exciting activities in lots of different directions, a single focus. But of course, as soon as you suggest manufacturing a better world, then someone has to come up with, being academics, what's the counterpoint to that? Are we, the alternative is to manufacture a worse world, to manufacture a mediocre world, you know, it's a bit of a no-brainer, but it is helpful for when we're recruiting students, when we're developing our programs, whenever we're considering whether we should do a thing or not. You're always conscious of the fact that, is this helping to make things better? We take it very seriously. But the other point I absolutely uh, love that I've heard today, which links back to this, was from Jürgen Meyer, from Siemens, when he was saying, look, this is an extraordinary opportunity we're facing. And um, somebody had said that, you know, this is a historic moment. And we're going to be in the history books. And he was saying, yes, and I want to be in the history books for good reason. Not because we were the generation who messed up the fourth industrial revolution. I heard that. Yeah. It was a a little bit... Powerful, isn't it? Well, it was powerful. It was also a little bit like whistling past the graveyard. But (laughs) (laughs) but by the same token, you're absolutely right. Because um, Jürgen, as as an arch-diplomat, and he talks about how we were slow to the third industrial revolution and so on. But the fact is that we as a country lost a generation of manufacturers from the mid-80s or late 80s through to uh, early 2000s. Yes. Uh, There's a whole generation been lost. And if this generation gets it wrong, manufacturing will be in trouble. Absolutely. And the fact that manufacturing is so, it has changed so much, the old model we have of manufacturing versus service and all of these SIC code related issues that cause endless problems. Um, what we're facing now is a much more complex economy, a complex society, where manufacturing and services and social and economic all blend together. So it's not as if we would, it would be bad enough if we just lost more manufacturing, but if we don't understand how we can benefit from this, we really are in trouble. Well, on that um, challenging note, <laughs> Tim Menchel, thank you very much indeed for joining My us. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.